Hi everyone, it's Mark here again, and I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. I like to use these little video interviews um, as a kind of measure of how we're doing. We've we've tipped over the 100,000 member mark um, across our six LinkedIn groups over the last week or so. Um, and this is the fun bit. This is where I get to, to meet and get to, to know our full members. So Krista, Cloutier has joined me today and Krista is a full member, thank you very much, and the Artist Whisperer, which I'm keen to hear more about. Krista, thank you so much for joining me today from France and um, would you like to say hello to everyone else? Bonjour everyone from France. Um, I'm really happy to be here and I'm just thrilled to be part of the group. That's great. So we're going to do a whistle-stop tour over the next 15 minutes or so so okay. um um so that we can understand a bit more about the work that Krista does we're going to do her arts and culture hot top 10 which okay. invariably pulls out anecdotes and surprises so but, but before we do perhaps you could provide us with some context of the kind of work that you're doing uh who you work with and 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 what it is that the service that you provide. So I know you've got a network growing as well of artists. So do you want to give us the lowdown? Sure. Um, my name is Krista. I'm an American who has escaped. Uh, I started out as an art dealer. And uh, after going to art school, I became an art dealer. And it was one of those stories of um, be careful what you wish for. I became very successful in a field that didn't make me very happy. And so I, uh, I had my midlife correction, uh, sold everything I owned, moved to Europe, uh, first to France, then I was in the UK for a long time, now I'm back in France. And I wanted to work with artists in a different way than the way I had been doing. So I've created an online program called The Working Artist. And uh, my clients call me the artist whisperer because I just love getting inside an artist's head and helping them to find what I call their golden thread, um, what makes them different, what makes them stand out, what makes them come alive, what helps to connect them to their audience and uh, and to do their best work. That sounds great. And I, there'll be several members of our groups and, our, our, and the Arts and Culture Network itself who would benefit from chatting to you. I can think of two already. Um, when I'm not doing this, I do brand and marketing consultancy. And one of the things I've advised some of the artists to do is to find that um, identifying characteristic that differentiates them. And I've got a conversation actually later today with Maurizio, he's in Italy and working, browsing through his work. Um, I realized that it had a kind of Russian iconic medieval feel to it but it but so but his the, but the subject matter is topical and and contemporary so um he's now describing himself as a modern medieval artist um, like so and I don't know any others <laughs> <which is great. laughs> um Rossi Henderson Begg is a member as well and and we found that everything she produces seems to be inspired by oceans. So she now describes herself as an oceanic artist. Um, and both of those were, those pieces of advice were, were inspired by Seth Godin, the marketing philosopher yeah. who, who once said, um, find your smallest viable audience and become the best option for it. Um, so for Rossi, it's anyone who loves mainly blue abstract art that reminds you of oceans. Now that's a smaller group of people than the art world community but um for those people who love that especially she's the best option so no i think that's great um i'll, I'll make sure when we do the uh, matchmaking that we do for our new members i'll make sure that um that includes um artists who who could benefit from from spending time with you so great that's excellent wonderful work it's needed because we, yeah absolutely you know, we, yeah right let's jump in for some fun okay. um I'm going to ask you some questions and and um, and ask you for your favourite in certain categories. They they may or may not be arts and culture related, so we'll see. Are you ready? I think so. <laughs> rabbit in the head. <laughs> rabbit in the head. I feel like I'm on a hot seat. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question I have is is 
to ask you if you have a favorite building and if so why I do have a favorite building um not far from here uh, I live in the Provencal countryside and if I hike through fields and forests and meadows I will come across a 13th century abbey called the Abbey de saint hilaire and uh, I go there at least twice a month on a little pilgrimage for the new moon and for the full moon. Uh, it's kind of my way of stopping work, taking a break and checking in with myself. I found that the abbey was built on ruins of land that um, goes back to the third century. So uh, like hermits used to live in a cave there. So it's it's been like sacred land for, you know, many, many, many years. And it's not a working abbey anymore, but it's it's a very special place. Um, how close are you to X? I'm about an hour away. Okay, I my my the first night of my first honeymoon um, was in um, Abbey de Saint Croix, which I think is, is quite close to X. It sounds very similar. Yeah, that's been converted to a, a hotel. It's, it was just fantastic, lovely. So I've got you there at the um, Abbey de Saint, what was it? Saint Hilaire, like Hilary, Hilaire. Saint Hilaire, nice, very nice. Um, okay, and what about a favorite book? My favorite book is a book that probably a lot of your listeners have read. It's called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. It's, I think it's over 25 years old now, but it, you know, it is still on the list of the 100 best-selling books of all time. And uh, I loved that book when it came out. I studied it like the Bible. I uh, was able to study with Julia Cameron personally, and I even took a university course on that book. I tend to think that my whole career has really been built on that book. And I'm just finishing my own book now, which is a modern version, uh, the next step for the artist's way, teaching artists how to make a living from their creativity. That so sounds, it had a huge influence on me. That sounds great. I bought that book a, a year or so ago for my wife. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's great. Okay, so we've got that book there, excellent. Um, and what about a favorite beverage? So I want you to imagine, right, we're going to we're going to deviate slightly. I know you, you don't like that, but we're going to deviate <laughs> slightly. We're going to combine our two our, our two yeah. things. So we've got your favorite building, we've got your favorite book. Um, I'd like you to imagine, and tell me to stop if you don't want to do this, but it's it's great fun. I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting in a cafe close to the abbey. Um, okay. and and there it is in front of you. You're sitting outside this beautiful French cafe um and your book is there the artist's way you've been reminding yourself of, of how wonderful a book that is and there's a drink to your left what what drink might that be in those circumstances let's assume it's june and it's sunny Ooh. and the sun is well over the yard arm as well well because i did live in england for so many years i really learned to love beer and i like my beer like my men cold and bitter <laughs> <laughs> excellent so you've got a nice glass of cold um dark bitter english ale there next to you excellent now um let's assume that you've been approached by a rather wealthy um family foundation okay um, who like to fund research into the arts and culture sector they've offered you a year in any in the country of your choice exploring that country's artistic landscape and want and they want you to report back now it's all expenses paid a rather generous fee uh, first class all the way with with a welcoming delegation when you get there um and they've said to you would would you like to do this and you said yes i would thank you we'll make sure everything's fine at home um while you're away um where would you like to go here you know i was I was living a really good life in America. And someone came into my office once and said, don't you wish you could just escape the rat race, sell it all and go somewhere like the South of France? And I thought that I couldn't think of anything better. 
I wanted to find my own creativity again after working as an art dealer, after supporting other people's art for so long. So I sold every single thing I owned, quit my great job, and I moved to France, which I thought would just be for a year. I ended up meeting a guy, falling in love, moving to England. But when that fell apart, I ended up back here again. I can't think of anywhere better than France. Okay, that's that will allow that. I think that's good. Thank I you. Think might want to base you in Paris, if you don't mind. All right. Or no? Well, I like the country. Okay. I like the side. So you can be in Aix-en-Provence then. All right, that's good. Okay, happy medium. Beautiful, okay. Um, excellent. Have you read A Year in Provence? Yes, book? it was written just across. I could see the village where it was written. Can you? Peter somebody, wasn't it? I can't remember. Your mail. That's right. I loved that book. That was great. Yeah. Okay, so you're in Aix-en-Provence, capital of your region, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, um, but one of the things that the, the, the family foundation who have inspired... Who, who would like you to do this research. Um, th they, they'd like to do a little bit of a research on you during the course of the year. Uh oh. Um, and it's a condition of the gig. Um, okay. And that is that they, they want you to restrict your musical intake to one musical genre, one type of music for a year. They want to find, they want to study the impact of that on you. So assuming you agree, what, type of music or genre would you be most happy restricting yourself to I'd find this awful but there you go I know it is pretty awful isn't it um because music's such a well I actually have a secret passion for Gregorian chants Ooh. <laughs> and don't laugh but no I think it's I'll great tell you the story it's um when COVID hit and we all went into lockdown, uh, I was here actually in France and uh, my boyfriend at the time sheltered in place with his girlfriend and she was not me, um, which was a bit of a, a surprise and a huge heartbreak. So I spent my confinement uh, sneaking out of my house, going through the fields in the forest to the abbey where I would cry and cry. And when the confinement lifted, the day I walked to the abbey, as soon as I got there, the gates opened and I was able to walk in for the first time. And I sat at the front of the chapel by myself and I, you know, I was still, uh, and I was sitting there crying and I heard some people come in and, you know, I looked and I looked like a group of tourists, you know, some guys walking around, poking around. And they couldn't really see me because they were behind me. So I was just sitting there feeling sorry for myself. And all of a sudden they lined up behind me and they started singing. They were monks. Oh. And they were doing a Gregorian chant in this really sacred space to me at a time that I was feeling so, so low. And it really changed my energy. It changed everything. Mm. Uh, I've been in love with Gregorian chants ever since because it always feels like a little message from above. Do you remember that piece by Talis? Thomas Tallis, I'm struggling for the for the name now. It's that there, it's about 16 different voice parts in one piece. It just grows and grows oh. and grows. Somebody oh, I don't know it. You don't know it. I no. should, I'll find it. It'll, it'll come to me. Um, Isabel, okay. could you find that piece for me? Thomas Tallis is the composer. Okay. And see if we can add it. <laughs> we'll add it into the interview. There we go. Cool. The wonders of having your assistant with you for the day. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> I need one of those. Isabel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like theory. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Shout it out if um uh if if you find it. It's it's a I think it's a motet, but um just just on Google, just for the name of it, and then anyone who watches this can have a look at it. It may come to me. Um it we'll see. Anyway, back to back to Provence. Um so you're listening, yes, Gregorian chant for a year in the Abbey, wonderful. Um, now, some some colleagues have decided that um, local friends want to help you on this cultural immersion, immersion um, and they want to take you to do a dance performance. So, and this is in X, in a theatre in X, and you, it's a rather magical theatre. You can 
you can find um you can have any dance performance you wish um and living or dead or any dance group or any form of dance what would you want to choose in those circumstances i would want them to turn the music up real loud and invite us all onto the stage and just rock out and dance i would rather dance with them than watch other people dance sounds great um there's a lovely show in that I don't know if it's still on called Once, where they do that. It's set in an Irish bar, which is on the stage. Really? And the uh, and the interval, everyone's invited up to drink with the cast. It's great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Okay, good. You can do that. Um, what about dinner afterwards? You can choose any cuisine, any national cuisine you like to have dinner after the show. I don't live in France for nothing, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful French cuisine. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of an auberge where you pop in at lunchtime and there's no menu it's just lunch yeah exactly it's like Surprise. someone's grandmother said you know when she was when she was young when she was asked what's for dinner she'd say dinner <laughs> <laughs> and it could be anything in France it really is I could and and no, wanted... that's it that's it <laughs> take potluck literally yeah um um, what about a sport? Because we can include sport in our cultural landscape. So if you had a day of sport, either participating or or spectating with your cultural colleagues there in Act X, what would you what would you like to watch or take part in? I'm not very sporty, but a secret fact about me is that I paid my way through university uh, gambling, um, <laughs> horse races. Really? Uh -huh. That's really? I haven't you been see, anecdotes and surprises. <laughs> I haven't been in years, but um, I quite I quite like the horse races. Okay, we can do that. That sounds great. I used to do dabble as well, but I would always back the uh, the favorite to lose. Uh, so in certain races with certain numbers um, over certain distances. So a short, like a five furlong sprint, mm -hmm. a field of 12 horses coming out of the gates. Um, apparently the favorites lose those um, races. It's easier for them to lose those races than, than a, a longer race. Um, so I think it's something like 40% of t cases the favorite loses a short sprint. So you can, now that it's, now that you can do the, you can back it to lose. Yeah. Uh, back it not to win basically so yeah that worked quite a while uh, for a while for me um my other guilty pleasure is blackjack i'm st i've spent 20 years trying to hone um a winning formula haven't done it yet i have a great formula for craps i play yeah. dice mm -hmm. mm, yeah i i i've got i've got one working but it's it it kind of requires you to double up when you lose um, uh -huh. and because the the bank will bust 20 percent of the time so um but what it, it gets a bit worrying when you're looking at piling on hundreds of pounds just to get back to where you started from so anyway we digress there we go Sport. <laughs> love that um and in x there is a traveling digital art gallery okay and it's high tech and they can project onto the walls of their uh, temporary structure the work of any visual artist the entire work of any visual artist in a kind of maze-like structure so you can enter in and you you literally walk through the chronology of that artist's output um, mm. but you can only choose one artist so in those circumstances who would you like to choose well you're asking me to choose my favorite child here because I work with artists right I've always worked with artists but I will say one of the most remarkable human beings I've ever met is an artist I worked with for 10 years named James Terrell. James Terrell is the closest thing to uh, Leonardo da Vinci that we have. He, uh, he's a light artist and his life's work, he's done all kinds of things, but his life's work is um, he won the MacArthur Genius Award. And I think you get like a million dollars when you win that. And he used it to buy an extinct volcanic crater in the deserts of Arizona. 
and he's spent his life turning it into a work of art. It's an observatory that um, there's different chambers, 27 different chambers, I think, and each chamber is dedicated to a different celestial event. And some happen every day, some happen every 1500 years. There's no electricity or computers involved. It's all light and optics and astronomy and art, and it will blow your mind. Wow. Uh, I would, I would happily look at his work. Excellent. I love that. That's great. And then um, we now try and we need a favorite play or musical because you're going to take your colleagues to a theater show. Um, it can be any play or musical and it can be the original cast if you wish. And so what would you choose to see at a magic theater that can show any play or musical? Well, I wrote a musical that hasn't yet been produced. Uh, it's about the life and times of Salvador Dali. So wow. I'd be like my own if I could. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds that sounds great. I think it was um, Jesse Norman, the the opera singer, who I've seen her. I've seen her. She uh, yeah, she yeah. Um, she did Desert Island Discs on the BBC, which you might remember, where a celebrity chooses eight eight tracks that they would take to a desert island. I think she was the only person who ever appeared on that show who 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 um chose eight performances of her of her own <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but which is fine you can have your absolutely you can have your 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 own musical at least it gets gets shown which is the main thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> excellent um so it's film day next day film night right. cinema trip with your new cultural colleagues in x um what would you want to see on the big screen that's easy what I always watch, Charlie Chaplin. Any any particular one? I watch them all over and over. It's kind of a weird thing with me. Um, but if I had to choose a favorite, it would be The Kid. Okay. I love The General. Is oh, that, or is that Buster Keaton? That's, not, that's Buster Keaton. Ah, the one where he's sitting on the front of the steam train. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was just telling someone the other night, I can always tell when... Uh, a relationship I'm in is starting to go south when my partner says, you know, I really like Keaton. And I'm like, it's <laughs> gotta be Chaplin if you're gonna be with me. <laughs> Brilliant, okay, you can have that. Now, uh, the next day is Hero Day and you can choose two people to have lunch with. Um, you'll, the three of you will lunch together and um, they can be with us or not, but the two people that you would most like to, to hear converse um and have have lunch with gosh two people um well charlie chaplin would have to be one of them i've read all the books on him i have so much to ask him uh and the other i don't know if i want to share him to be honest okay yeah <laughs> his can... wife una his wife una okay that, yeah that's, that's perfectly fine and the stuff I have right there. Really? Yeah, her family gave it to me. It's a <laughs> prized possession. That's brilliant. I love that. Um, now, the next day uh, is your own. It's one of those wonderful days. I don't get them very often um, where you know when you wake up that the day is entirely yours and you can do whatever you like until you go back to bed again. Mm. Um, so I remember doing I was in a west end show we we're doing eight shows a week and i and that was when i wanted those days the most um there's something frustrating about going through a day knowing that the evening you've got to be doing something else um so what would your ideal day look like in x let's assume you can have any transport any company any um guidance you we can close places for the beckham like the beckham entrance um and you can do whatever you like for the whole day what would you choose to do i think i'd pick you up in a concord go to vegas <laughs> <laughs> tables and come back that sounds good yeah a nice break from um <laughs> we both have to listen to gregorian chant on the, on the plane. <laughs> that sounds great i've never been so that would be a real treat for me that would be fantastic um now on your way back home from X, um, they've they've um, 
they've lifted the ban on other pieces of other genres of music. Um, okay. So what's the first thing you would listen to after a year of Gregorian chant? After a year of Gregorian chant. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story that follows on the Gregorian chant story that plays in nicely to this, because that was the day that the, you know, the restrictions got lifted here in France the day of the Gregorian chant. And some friends had invited me to listen to a, a gypsy singer in a cafe. And uh, so I joined them and, you know, was feeling a little more cheery after the Gregorian chants. Um, not that that's usually terribly uplifting to most people, but I was feeling, I was feeling hopeful again. And the uh, gypsy singer kind of fancied me. So, you know, he dedicated a song to me and, it's funny because this former boyfriend, his nickname for me was Chicago. And the gypsy singer sang Chicago to me, Frank Sinatra song. Mm. And he got everyone in the place to sing Chicago to me. I love Frank Sinatra. And so I was serenaded twice in one day, first by monks and then by someone singing Sinatra. And I just happened to love Sinatra. That's so that would be it. That's great. What a day that was. That was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's it. That's your that's your perfect luxury um cultural year sorted. Wow. With, with, your, with your best of. That was great. Um if you don't mind, we'll do the this or that game quickly now. Sure. Okay. okay. This, I'm ready. This is um fast paced. It's inspired by a TV show I saw when when I was a kid um in the UK. A celebrity would stand in front of a camera like this and Two options would pop up and they had to choose one or the other. Um, I remember, the, I think David Beckham did one, which was quite funny, but I've, I've, I've added a bit of arts and culture to it. So here we go. Are you ready? You have to choose one and you can only have one. Those okay. are the, that's the rule. Tea or coffee, Krista? Coffee. Radio or television? Television. High heels or trainers? Trainers. Car or motorcycle? Motorcycle. Mm. Comedy or horror? Comedy. Concert hall or sports stadium? Concert hall. Cat or dog? Dog. Test the water or dive in at the deep end? Test the water. Orange juice, bits or no bits? Bits. Library or museum? <laughs> library I can, do, I can do library library <laughs> no <Beethoven>. music <laughs> Beethoven or Mozart Mozart shower or bath bath uh, cooking or being cooked for being cooked for fiction or non-fiction I wish I could say fiction but it's nonfiction. Shopping online or shopping in store? In store for the cardio. <laughs> Reggae or salsa? Reggae. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? Start immediately. Science or history? History. New York or LA? New York. Uh, early morning or late at night? Uh-huh. <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> Messy desk or tidy desk? Mm, messy. Um, toilet paper, over or under? Ooh, good question. Over. Apparently that was the patented version over. But, <laughs> um, bedroom door open or closed? Open. Zombies or vampires? Ooh, neither. Okay, red or white wine? It depends on the season, doesn't it? Red. Batman or Superman? Batman. Numbers or words? Words. Rare or well done? 
rare. Mild or spicy? Spicy. Opera or chamber music? Opera. Whiskey or rum? Whiskey. Um, gold or silver? Got gold and silver. We'll say silver. Mountains or beaches? Mountains. Sweet or savory snacks? Together. Mm. <laughs> um, abstract or realistic? Realistic. And finally, see the future or change the past? See the future. There we go. There we, that was lovely. I love that. That was great. The feedback I, I get. I, Sorry. My heart is pounding. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that was the that was the sprint at the end. Yeah. Just, thank you so much for doing this. Um, we all know you a lot better now as a result, which is fantastic. Oh <laughs> don't, don't rush off, but for the time being, I want to um stop recording and thank you very much for being one of our full members and for being such a good sport and doing this today. It's great fun. And I highly recommend this group to uh, anyone who hasn't joined yet. I've really gotten a lot of value out of it and thoroughly enjoyed it. That's great. Thank you so much.